Earlier we talked about parallel collections and we showed how we could create something called a race condition. And the race condition is when two or more threads are accessing a single location in memory and at least one of them is writing. And the problem with race conditions is that they can cause your program to behave in unpredictable ways. They're, they're called race conditions because the outcome of the program depends upon what uh, winds up happening first. And generally when we write programs, we want things to be predictable, and so race conditions cause us a problem there. This is the code that we use to demonstrate our race condition. We have our counter i. We just count up to a million, and inside of that loop we add one to, to i. And of course, if I make this so it's not parallel, the last thing that this prints is always going to be a million. But because this is being done in parallel, it's not a million. In fact, that was quite a bit less than a million. If we run it again, that's also a lot less than a million, but different than the first time. Again, different. So we introduce randomness that depends upon the thread scheduler. And we need to figure out how we can uh, get around that. What are the ways in which we can prevent that from happening? Now, to help do this, I'm actually going to create another little bank account in here. So inside of our multi-threading, we'll make a new class that we will just call bank account. And this is going to be a very simple bank account here. We're going to have a private bar for the balance. And then uh, that's it. I won't bother putting in things like IDs for customers or, or any of the, or an ID for a, a bank account. Any of the things that we put into our more complete object oriented bank account example previously. Let's make a method so that we can get at the balance and then probably have some methods for deposit and withdraw and those could actually be taken from our earlier bank account so that we don't have to spend time retyping them here. We'll see if this winds up being happy if our code style is similar enough. Okay, so there we go. So deposit takes an amount and if the amount is less than zero it gives back false otherwise it adds the amount to the account it withdraws as long as it's a value that can be withdrawn. And we can show that we can get a very similar type of race condition to what we had previously. Let's go ahead and let's create now ACC equals new bank account of zero. So we're gonna open an account with no money we're going to deposit a million pennies in it. So for I in one, two dot par, deposit, sorry, ACC dot deposit one penny. So this is really the exact same example that we had here but instead of directly incrementing the value, we're just going through this object that we have and calling a method that should do that. Now, of course, this, uh, this method has a little bit more in there because it has some checks. It's not just the plus equals, uh, but we'll probably see a similar type of result. Print line, the balance. And we run this. And that's definitely not a million. It is closer than we were seeing before. Uh, and turns out that doing that extra work in there kind of reduces the odds that two different threads are going to modify balance at the same time. But it really doesn't matter. This is still very, very, very wrong. And the question is, how can we fix this? Well, the easiest way to fix this um, is to use what's called synchronization. Now, really, we want to use things like futures and we want to structure our code in ways that avoid race conditions as much as possible. In just a bit, we're gonna see how we can use actors to have mutation, but without the possibility of race conditions. We could make a, an actor bank account at that point. Um, but, but it would be nice to know how would we fix this here? 
and we do that through synchronization. So it turns out that all objects have a method in them called synchronized. And synchronize takes a by name argument, and I will put that on both of these. When I call synchronize like this, re remember that's really this dot synchronized. Uh, so you can actually call synchronized on any uh, of the objects, anything under any ref. And what this does is it basically sets a little lock. Uh, they're called monitors that each object has and when some other code tries so if one call if one uh, one piece of code one thread calls synchronized while it's in here if another piece of code tries to go into a synchronized block that's synchronized on the same object it looks at the lock and it goes oh you're already locked I'm going to sit here and wait for you to finish so that way you can't have two threads at the same time. When the first thread is done with its synchronized block, it notifies all the other threads that are waiting, and one of those threads will, will start processing. So what happens now if we do this? It finished, okay? And it gave us the right answer. Now what I'm not doing here is timing this. It turns out that by being synchronized, this runs a lot slower. In fact, not only does it run a lot slower than than it did without synchronization, it would run a lot slower than it does if I just get rid of par. Okay, so being parallel can actually make you slower if you do too much synchronization in there. Um, so that's one of the issues with synchronization. That's part of the reason why we'd like to do things with futures. Remember, futures have the ability to give you back a value and then you can schedule new things that can happen with that. We'd like to be, th be stringing together a bunch of futures in a way that is deterministic and doesn't have race conditions. Uh, but if we have to do something to prevent the race conditions, we can synchronize, but we have to realize there's a cost to that, and that cost could actually reverse any speed gain that we got by parallel. In fact, it can re reverse it by a lot. Uh, there are, if, if you go through and you time this code, I'm only going up to a million, so, so this goes pretty quickly. But if you time the sequential version, get rid of par, get rid of synchronized, and then take this up to like a billion and time it on uh, for, for the sequential and for the parallel with synchronization, you will likely find that the parallel with synchronization runs uh, a lot slower than the sequential. And so for this problem, you're really just wasting time if, you are, if you're parallelizing it and then trying to make it safe that way.